Okay, so this is going to be a test of the Leslie Model 3300 uh, amplified speaker. And uh, I'm using the uh, line out from a uh, Casio keyboard just as a sound source. So when I first power it on, I'm going to leave the uh, tube pre-drive. There's a, there's a tube stage driver that you can turn off or turn on. I'm going to leave that off uh, to begin with and do my tests. Um, with that off and then I'll turn that on later. I'll probably do some editing to uh, take out some of the delays and when I change setups and stuff like that. I have the controls on the back set as followed. I have the uh, drive level for the tube stage and the off position. I have the volume all the way down. I have the uh, tube mode switch in the middle position or knob in the middle position the bass control in the middle treble in the middle uh, middle in the middle treble in the middle and I have the horn level at a minimum and the subwoofer volume at a minimum now the subwoofer volume uh, doesn't do anything in, when it's self-powered. The subwoofer volume is there for, there's an additional jack on the back here that is a subwoofer line out. So if you had an additional subwoofer you wanted to run off this unit, you would uh, plug that into the subwoofer line out, have to be a powered subwoofer of course. And then if you want to control the level at this sense out for the subwoofer, you would use this volume on the control all the way on the right. So just gonna bring the volume up slowly because this thing is plenty loud. So that's, uh, that's about at the 9 o'clock position. So let me see if I can find a, uh, let's go with a church organ. Can you hear the, the, the tone is nice and clear. I'm not including it in the sale because this belongs to another unit that I have, but this is just a standard quarter inch foot switch. And you can plug this in on the, uh, into a jack on the back here. And that allows you to uh, switch the mode on the uh, Leslie from uh, stop to slow to fast. So let me uh, illustrate that. second for the Leslie to go from slow to fast it hasn't come up to full speed yet turn the uh, tube driver stage on. I'm going to bring the uh, volume back down because with the pre-driver stage of the tube in there, 
the uh, output of the keyboard, I think, is overdriving it. So the pre-drive stage has kind of a, uh, almost like a fuzz tone sound to it. It's nowhere near as clean. Uh, let me see if I can bring the volume down on the keyboard. There we go. Alright, so I brought the volume down on the keyboard, so now I'm not going to be overdriving that first stage. Hopefully I can bring it up now. pre-drive uh, stage kicked in and the volume turned all the way up it's so sensitive that you can actually hear some of the uh, I don't know, for lack of a better word the sonic artifacts of the actual Leslie uh, speaker rotating I'll bring the camera in close maybe you can hear that now I've got the camera right up to the side of the cabinet so just because I wanted you to be able to hear what that sounds like Now if I shut the uh, shut down or turn the volume down on that tube stage, that almost completely goes away. Now I can bring the uh, main volume back up. GoPro's uh, audio system is not going to be able to really faithfully reproduce the uh, sonic range of this thing. As long as I have the uh, tripod down here on the side, I uh, just want to point out what damage there is on the unit. Uh, electrically, it's fine, but there is a uh, pretty good rub right there. Clearly, this was up against something, and uh, rubbing in this point. There's another one that mirrors this almost exactly on the other side. There's some light scuffing here and scratches here. I mean, that might actually be able to uh, be cleaned up some uh, but that's right down to the uh, the backing wood right there that little spot right there on the front there's some light scratches here down below we got some scuffing here and there you can actually see the uh, horn rotating in there and it might be a little harder to see but you can actually see the uh, the lower unit rotating past every once in a while through that grill Here's on the other side, there's that other marred area there, almost identical in size and position on the on the two sides. And same thing near the rear there, there's uh, light scuffing, rubbing, but not as bad as this. This, the, the, this and the other one on the other side are the only two spots I've seen on the entire cabinet where it's actually rubbed right through. Here's a look from the back of the unit. Uh, here's my foot switch that's plugged in right here. The foot switch, when you flip it, because it's just a, uh, it's a standard foot switch, momentary contact, but the way that the logic is set up inside this thing is it's uh, 
it's looking for that momentary contact. So if you hit it once, you'll see it actually goes into high speed. If I hit it again, it goes to low. And then you can toggle it back and forth just by hitting it. If you want to stop it, you actually hold the switch and it goes to stop. So the red LED obviously stopped, the yellow is slow, and the uh, green is fast. And then your speed that you get out of the different uh, units on the different settings, you can trim that over here. So you've got your uh, horn rotor up at the top here, and you've got your uh, drum rotor at the bottom. And it has actually the rise time, fall time, slow speed, and fast speed settings over here. Um, I've left those the way they were when I got the unit and uh, haven't messed with any of those. It's a little bit more light on the situation so we can get a rundown of what's over here. Here's our line input. Here's the uh, tube drive level and then you see this tube off. So that's the tube off. Here's the uh, main volume. Uh, this is tube mode and there's soft and hard. So that's going to uh, basically decide how crunchy you want that stage to be. Um, bass, middle, and treble. Uh, your horn level. And then again, this is the subwoofer out, which will not have any effect at all. It actually controls the volume level of what's coming out of this jack right here, which is to go to an optional uh, subwoofer. There's an 8-pin input over here. Okay. Then down here, you have your... Uh, main power on and off switch, your AC input, which is, this is a standard D type plug. Um, nothing fancy there. So if you lose or damage the plug at uh, cord, it's easy to get one. Um, and then there are two more jacks down here. These are marked stationary out, uh, left main and right sub. And then this is the 11 pin input. The 11-pin input, the reason why I think that that's important to some people is because I noticed that um, a lot of the units were listed specifically. They mentioned the 11-pin input. So for what it's worth, it's there. I'm not quite sure. Maybe that's a, uh, maybe that's a proprietary Hammond connection or something. Maybe you know more about that than I do. All right. So I think that about covers it.